First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Welcome to WFT News First at Five. I'm Amy Gallo. And I'm Bree Hobrar. Thanks for joining us. America faces more grief and anger after a gunman attacks an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs, killing five people and injuring 25 others. Authorities say it could have been as hard and as bad as the Pulse Massacre that happened in Orlando six years ago, but people fought back. NBC's Jay Gray has more from a town in mourning. Flowers, cards, and crime scene tape now surround a place where so many gathered to feel secure and free. That's what we built Club Q for, is to be that safe haven. Safety shattered by a spray of gunfire. Bodies on the ground, blood, shattered glass, people dead. At least five dead, more than two dozen wounded, when police say 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich walked inside the LGBTQ nightclub, firing into the crowd before he was wrestled to the ground. At least two heroic people inside the club confronted and fought with the suspect and were able to stop, stop the suspect from continuing to kill and harm others. Police recovered two weapons immediately after the massacre. Investigators and federal agents continue to search the club, trying to figure out how and why it happened. The motive of the crime is part of the investigation, and whether this was a hate crime is part of that investigation. Many in this grieving community say the answer to that question is clear. And last night they were met with hate, and they deserve better than that. And so they gather families friends, survivors, Ashe. to honor those lost, making sure their light continues to shine. Jay Gray, NBC News, Colorado Springs. It's an ongoing investigation and we're learning more about the suspect. He's identified as 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich. He was arrested last year for a bomb threat in a brief police standoff at his mother's home. Those charges were repeatedly dropped and the case sealed without application of Colorado's flag law. In Orlando, people scarred by the Pulse nightclub shooting came together to honor the victims at Club Q. A memorial service was held yesterday at the Pulse interim memorial. LGBTQ community leaders spoke about gun violence and violence against the gay community. Pastor Terry Steed Pierce reflected on the hurt he's feel she's feeling. And it hurts and my heart hurts for those mothers who still walk past their child's empty room and they're not there, you know, and nothing's going to bring them back. And yet more and more parents, more and more siblings, more and more friends are losing their partners, their lovers, their husbands, their wives, whatever, and we still haven't changed one thing that would make a difference. The Pulse gunman killed 49 people and wounded 53. The FBI classified it as a terror attack and noted the gunman made a 911 call pledging his allegiance to ISIS. A familiar name is back in charge at Disney as it looks to rein in costs. Bob Iger is returning as the CEO of the entertainment giant. Iger retired in 2020 after a 15-year run. Following the announcement, Disney stock rose about 9% during Monday morning trading. The company's stock fell as much as 40% this year. Ahead of Thanksgiving, airports across the country are reporting heavily booked flights, signaling that holiday travelers are ready to hit the road early. The expectations are that travel will reach levels not seen since before the pandemic year of 2020. TSA says it has staffed up, making it easier to handle a high tra travel period. And highways could be as crowded as those airports. AAA says travel in Florida could be the highest since 2005, with an estimated 2.7 million people making a road trip. The big uncontrollable, of course, is the weather. And, you know, with Thanksgiving coming up in a few days, I'm hoping this cooler weather lasts just a little bit longer, though I'm hoping for some sunshine when I get back to Jacksonville. What about you, Amy? I'm heading back to Tampa, so it's only going to get warmer. But let's see what WUFT's Daniela Rudolph has to say about the weather forecast this week. Daniela? So I do have some good news for you ladies. Temperatures are climbing. If you look at our change in the last 24 hours, up 22 in Gainesville, up in those mid to high 24s. But look at this jump for 28 degrees in Crystal River. Let's take a look at what it's doing to our temperatures right now. 70 in Gainesville, those mid to high 60s in the north, but again, a big jump to 75 in Crystal River. 
let's take a look at our campus cam. Right now, it's feeling like 68. It's looking relatively clear, although we do have a few stray clouds. What's it going to be like tonight out on the town? We have a cool 61 at 8 p.m. Cloudy with a chance of stray showers to the south. Cloudy and cool for 10 p.m., but clearing out at 12 a.m. Back to you. Thanks, Daniela. In other news, the Artemis 1 mission is continuing on its course. WFT's Jacob Sedesi has been following the mission since its first launch attempt back in August. And he's here now to update us on where the Orion capsule is today. Jacob? Thanks, Amy. The Orion spacecraft came within about 80 miles of the lunar surface this morning, a few minutes before 8 a.m. Eastern. It then traveled around the moon, losing signal with mission control back on Earth for several minutes, as expected. NASA confirmed at 8.01 a.m. that it had reacquired a signal from the spacecraft as it emerged from the far side of the moon. Orion even gave us a great shot of Earth as it came around, at a distance of about 280,000 miles. The ship will now begin circling the moon for six days in deep orbit before returning home. Today's maneuver is a major milestone in NASA's Artemis program. This uncrewed test mission serves to test the program's equipment for when humans get on board. The program is set to return humanity to the moon for the first time since the Apollo program 50 years ago, including the first woman and person of color. Artemis II will bring humans on a similar course around the moon, and Artemis III is set to bring humans back to the surface. Afterwards, NASA's sights are set on establishing bases on the moon and then moving to Mars. For the latest on Artemis I and the Artemis program, you can always follow my coverage at WUFT.org. That's all for now. Back to you. According to a report from the CDC, the flu is spreading fast across the United States. States like Alabama, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia have already seen outbreaks. Now the flu is starting to ramp up in west, out west in Colorado, New Mexico, and Texas. Experts say they haven't seen this type of early widespread activity in more than a decade. The FDA approves the first drug to delay the onset of type 1 diabetes, sometimes called juvenile di diabetes. T-Zield is a monoclonal antibody treatment. Injections are taken for 14 days and may cost over $190,000. The drug tries to prevent the body's immune system from mistakenly attacking cells in the pancreas that make insulin. The FDA approved the drug after a clinical trial of very high-risk people. T-Zield was shown to, to delay the the onset or progression by several years. The U.S. Defense Secretary is overseas and it may surprise you just how much attention he's paying to countries that aren't Russia, China or South Korea. And there's more news about former President Donald Trump. Will his comeback plans include a return to Twitter? Stay with us. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome back. Ukraine is responding to war crime accusations. Russia says videos circulating online show their soldiers being killed after surrendering. As Matthew Chance explains, Ukraine says this particular surrender turned out to be a trap. Well, these are really grisly scenes that have, have come to us from the east of Ukraine in the Luhansk region where fierce fighting is taking place. And it really underlines just how brutal this conflict between Ukraine and Russia uh, has become. The, the video, which is heavily edited, shows a number of Russian soldiers apparently surrendering uh, to Ukrainian forces. Uh, then there's, uh, uh, as that process continues, there's, uh, you know, there's 10 or 12 uh, Russian soldiers who are lying face down uh, on the floor in a surrender position. Then you hear some gunfire, the, the, the video cuts and um, and then it comes back later on from the air uh, where there's drone video of those same soldiers uh, lying on the ground in pools of blood apparently having been uh, been shot it has led to outrage on the part of the kremlin russian officials saying this is an example of ukrainian forces uh, abusing the rights of russian soldiers who were surrendering they say and executing them on the scene the ukrainians have pushed back on that, saying that the fact that there was gunfire uh, as those soldiers were surrendering shows that this was a feigned surrender, a fake surrender, if you like, which is also, by the way, illegal under international law. And therefore, uh, the Ukrainian forces were justified in, in opening fire. They also say, by the way, uh, that no Russian forces would have been killed in Ukraine if Russia had not staged what it says is this illegal invasion of their country. So it is 
Um, a terrible scene, as I say, very grisly to watch, but it does underline, again, uh, just how brutal and gruesome this Ukrainian-Russian conflict has now become. Matthew Chance, CNN in Kiev. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin is visiting Indonesia in an effort to strengthen ties. This is his fifth visit to the Indo-Pacific region. There was a wreath-laying ceremony this time before talks with his counterpart. Austin condemned Indonesia for its condemnation of Russia's aggression against Ukraine. Former President Trump's Twitter account is back online, though he said this weekend he sees no reason to return. His account was suspended two days after the January 6th Capitol riot. As NBC's Bree Jackson reports, a special counsel is taking over the investigation into Trump's actions. Veteran prosecutor Jack Smith named special counsel to oversee the investigation and to classify documents found at former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate and his role in the January 6th attack. As special counsel, he will exercise independent prosecutorial judgment to decide whether charges should be brought. The Justice Department says the move is partly due to Trump announcing his third presidential bid. The former president insists he did nothing wrong and blasted DOJ. This horrendous abuse of power is the latest in a long series of witch hunts. Legal analysts say the appointment of a special counsel likely means criminal charges have not been ruled out and expect to see a lengthy investigation. We've seen complex cases take years, not months. That may frustrate some people, but it's much more important that the Department of Justice get this right than that they do it quickly. Former Vice President Mike Pence criticized DOJ's decision and Trump's actions. I've not hesitated to criticize the president when I think he was wrong. And, uh, and clearly possessing cl classified documents in an unprotected area is not proper. In a surprise move over the weekend, Trump's Twitter account was reinstated after a nearly two-year ban. The president used that platform to incite that attack on the Capitol uh, his comments about the vice president, his own vice president, put Mike Pence's life uh, in danger. He showed no remorse about that. The January 6th committee continues its investigation of Trump's role in inciting the riot at the U.S. Capitol. I am so excited for Thanksgiving, and I really can't wait to just go home to my family. Same here, and let's just hope the weather is good enough for the holiday season. Daniela, what's Turkey Thursday looking like? Let's find out in my full Thanksgiving travel forecast after the break. Stay with us. You're watching WUFT TV News. So, of course, the big story on everyone's mind this week is holiday travel for Thanksgiving on Thursday. Let's take a look at what is in store for you if you are traveling to see your loved ones across the country. Looking at the coast in uh, Jacksonville, Orlando, and Miami, a few stray showers, but nothing really to worry about. But if you look at Houston moving up towards Jackson, a little heavier with that cloud cover, so a higher chance of precipitation. Temperature-wise, it's going to be 53 in Nashville, the mid to upper 50s in the north, but moving further inland, it's getting warmer. But look at that sunshine state. It is warm and sunny. Look at that big drop from 53, jumping all the way down to 77 in Miami. So if you are traveling, there are some things that you do need to take a note of. There are downpours likely along the I-4 in a few scattered showers elsewhere, but we should be drying out by Thursday just in time for those Thanksgiving celebrations. So if you are staying a little more local in the Gainesville Alachua area for that Thanksgiving celebration, there are a few stray showers that are potentially tickling along the first and space coast, but it's nothing for us to really worry about over here. Going to our hour by hour, starting out in the mid to low 60s, but dipping off into the mid to high 50s. So it is going to be a little chilly this evening, but nothing that we can't handle. Looking at going into your Tuesday, again, those stray showers tickling along the first and space coast, but we're a clear here in the Gainesville area. Our Tuesday high is starting out in Gainesville. It's 70, cooling off the further north that we go in those mid to high 60s, but again, warming up further south. Look at that 75 in Crystal River. Now, if you are like our, our lovely anchor ladies and you are a fan of the warm weather, I have good news for you because we are above average for this time of year. So you are in for an absolute treat this Thanksgiving.
Taking a final look at our six day outlook, starting the week on a semi crisp 70, but we're going to be going up, peaking on 75 for Thanksgiving, but then staying stable for Friday despite the chance for that 40% showers that could be impacting us, dipping off into the weekend for that low to mid 70s. Cooler week next week, so it's going to be beautiful. Back to you. I'm not much of a sports fan, but it's hard not to be when FIFA World Cup rolls around. Well, Amy, it is the biggest tournament in the world for a reason. All eyes are on Qatar right now. And WFT sports anchor Sean Humphrey is joining us now. We've been watching the game all day in the newsroom, haven't we? Absolutely, and I don't know how I feel about the result. I'm not wearing red, white, and blue for no reason. I'll tell you all about it. The U.S. played its first match in the FIFA World Cup today, and I'll have the result and more after the break. You're watching WUFT-TV News. It'll be a 1776 rematch as the United States plays England on Friday. England throttled Iran today 6-2. England sits atop the group with three points. Wales and the United States both tied at one. Iran in last with no points. Despite a large contingent of orange and blue traveling to Nashville on Saturday, the result disappointed Gator Nation Vanderbilt in an upset 31 to 24 Commodores. Vanderbilt hopped out to an early lead and didn't look back. Despite another strong performance from Anthony Richardson, 400 yards and three touchdowns, it was not enough. A last second Hail Mary devoid of grace. Gators lose at Vandy for the first time since 1988. Black Friday, it's sunshine showdown time. The Gators will be on the road, hoping to upset number 19 FSU. Here's what Florida coach Billy Napier had to say about the matchup. You know, when I was growing up, uh, Florida and Florida State were dominating college football. You know, and it was Steve Spurrier, it was Bobby Bowden, and um, pretty awesome uh, to be a part of this game. And certainly, uh, having been in the ACC for seven years and played against Florida State in the past, a um, ton of respect for that place in the history and tradition there. The game between the Gators and the Seminoles kicks off at 7.30 on Friday. Big SEC matchup for Gator Volleyball on Sunday, but the team rolled the dice and got snake eyes, swept off the floor by the Kentucky Wildcats. Even though it was a close matchup, UK defeated the Gators in straight sets. Senior night for Florida was bittersweet and a little sour, but the team defeated Kentucky in similar fashion Saturday, making this one a weekend split. Both teams are tied for first in the SEC, with Florida finishing out their regular season with back-to-back -back matches at Ole Miss Friday and Saturday. The Gators are 21-5 and this year. Florida basketball had a fantastic weekend. Both the men's and women's teams picked up early season victories. After a rough loss to Florida State, the Gators rebounded in a big way. They defeated the Wildcats 82-73. Nina Rickards, 23 points. Florida will host Furman tonight. Tip-off is at 6. On the men's side for Florida, the outcome looked bleak after the first half on Friday. At one point, the Gators trailed by 19 points against rival Florida State. But Colin Castleton finished with 25 points and 9 rebounds, 76-67 to 67 Gators. It'll be a big week in sports as we head into Turkey Day. Florida men's basketball will play in the Phil Knight Legacy Tournament starting Thursday. The United States' World Cup run continues against England on Black Friday. Florida football will play FSU on Friday for the first time in the series' history. Then it's Gator Volleyball at Ole Miss for the start of a two-game series. That's your look at sports. I'm Sean Humphrey. And here's something to warm your heart. Teenage love letters from a famous songwriter, Fetch a Pretty Penny. 42 notes that teenage Bob Dylan wrote to a girlfriend just sold for nearly $670,000 at auction. The future Dylan, who had yet to change his name from Zimmerman, expressed his feelings for Barbara Ann Hewitt. They first dated in high school, and Hewitt held on to the letters until she died in 2020. As Daniela mentioned earlier, the forecast for Thanksgiving is looking up. But let's check in with her once more before we go. Let's take a look at our last set of six-day outlooks. Starting out at that crisp 70 for tomorrow, again peaking at 77 for your Thanksgiving celebration, cooling down into the weekend, dropping all the way into those low to mid 70s, 40 and 20% chance of showers for Friday and Saturday. 
Thanks, Daniela. BBC World News is up next, and PBS NewsHour is coming up at 7. But remember, your Florida news is always on at WFT.org. Have a good night.